On this edition of Early Look, I'm going to be previewing the lightweight main event September 28th as part of UFC Paris between Heinato Moicano and Benoit Saint-Denis. And if you never watched the show before, I'm going to go through a bunch of different stats. And then I'm going to give you my prediction at the end. You can agree or disagree. It doesn't matter to me. I just want to get your prediction as soon as you're done watching this video and hear who you think is going to win this awesome fight that's going to be headlining UFC Paris, like I mentioned. And like we always do on the show, I'm going to do a quick tale of the tape. By the way, my name is James Lynch. Hope you're enjoying uh, yourself today as we go through this fight. Uh, look at their records here. You can see Money Moicano is 19-5-1. Benoit Saint-Denis, the God of War, is 13-2. and two. Uh, ben, uh, Hinato Moicano is 35 years old. St. Denis just 28, 5'11 apiece, 72 to 73. So you can see Benoit St. Denis going to be younger and have a one, one inch reach advantage in this fight. They're both 5'11 and obviously St. Denis a little bit younger, like I mentioned. Let's have a close look at the God of War, Benoit St. Denis. This is in Paris, so we'll start with him first. 13 and 2 UFC record, like you can see. It's a five round fight. Uh, Benoit St. Denis got four knockouts and nine submissions in his career. He's never gone the distance in terms of, actually, he has gone the distance and he lost that fight, but he's never won by decision. That's what I meant to say. Um, and uh, he's the number 12th ranked lightweight. He's 28 years old, 5'11 with a 73 inch reach. So he's seven years younger and has a one inch reach advantage in this fight. He's a judo black belt. He's got performance of the night two times against Gabriel Miranda and Matt Frivola. He's got performance of the month as well against Matt Frivola, if that means anything. And uh, did not have an amateur debut, went straight to the pros in February of 2019. Made his UFC debut in October of 2021. He is 5-2 and two in the UFC. Uh, he has four stoppage victories, some notable wins. He's only got one, really. And the only notable win he has is Thiago Moises. I guess Frivola was ranked as well at one point, so maybe we can put him as a notable win too. But those are the only two wins that he's really had that are notable. And then he's had two losses, one to Zaleski at 170. Uh, and then he lost to Dustin Poirier in his last fight, uh, which we'll talk about here in a second. Um, he hasn't had any major layoffs in his career because, again, he joined in 2021. He's been pretty active uh, throughout. He also hasn't had any close fights because uh, he hasn't... Uh, he hasn't gone the distance in his UFC career other than his first fight, and that was not a close fight. It was Zaleski, all Zaleski in that fight. So we, we got to point that out too uh, with what he's been able to do. Uh, the Dustin Poirier fight, you know, that was a fight where he was favored going in. Let's quickly talk about that. Uh, you can see the betting odds had him in at minus 210, and he was looking good early in that fight. Uh, you know, he had Poirier in some trouble, um, but we all know what happened in the second round. He ran out of steam, and Poirier was able to finish him in that fight, but we later found out after, and I think some of us knew before if you looked at the pre-fight photo, he had a staff infection in that one so I certainly think that played a role in the fight and with this being five rounds that's where things are going to get really interesting in this matchup because can Benoit Saint-Denis is how's his cardio for five rounds you would think someone that's been in the military before is probably has good conditioning uh we're going to find out in this fight if it was just a one-off with Poirier or if this is something that's going to be a concern for Benoit Saint-Denis in his fights uh Benoit Saint-Denis stats are as follows significant strikes landed per minute 5.70 his striking accuracy is at 54 percent his strikes landed per minute is four point or sorry his uh striking defense is at 42 percent his takedown average is 4.76 his takedown accuracy is only 37 percent and his takedown defense is 69 percent we'll see if Moicano gets any takedowns there his sub average is also so 1.5. Uh, so that is pretty much everything you need to know about Benoit Saint-Denis. Again, he hasn't had very long of a UFC career, but you can see here he's a highlight reel machine finishing all of his fights and all of his wins. Very impressive stuff here from the God of War. But let's talk about the always popular Hinato Moicano. Money Moicano, as they're calling him these days. Great YouTube channel, by the way. Uh, Moicano, I mentioned it there. 19-5-1. He's got one knockout, 10 submissions, and 8 decisions. He's number 10th ranked lightweight. He is 35 years old. He's 5'11 with a 72-inch reach. No advantages for Moicano in terms of age, size, and reach. Uh, he trains at an American top team. He's got fight of the night one time against Brian Ortega. He's got performance of the night one time against Cub Swanson. He's tied with Charles Oliveira and Brendan Allen for third most rear naked submission victories in UFC history. Uh, Moicano did not have an amateur debut, just like Benoit Saint-Denis. Went straight to the pros in uh, 2010, March of 2010. So been competing a little bit longer than Benoit Saint-Denis, which makes sense. He's older. Made his UFC debut in December of 2014, uh, which was against Tom Nidamaki. I wonder where he's up to these days. Uh, he's 11-5 and five in the UFC. He's got seven stoppage wins, some notable wins. He's got a whole bunch. Listen to these. Uh, Calvin Cater, Cub Swanson, Brad Riddell, Drew Dober, and most recently Jalen Turner. But he's also got some losses here. Brian Ortega, Jose Aldo, Korean Zombie, Rafael Fazeev, Rafael Osanios. Not good against the Rafaels. 
Uh, he's fought in different weight classes as well. Some of those names I mentioned, they are featherweight names, uh, including Aldo and Korean Zombie. He's fought 17 times at featherweight. He's fought eight times at lightweight, and he's had one catchweight fight of 160. Uh, he's had a bunch of layoffs in his career. Might as well mention that. Uh, going from Nitamaki to Habib's teammate, uh, Zubiara. <coughs> there was a 511-day layoff between those fights. It was like almost two years. Uh, going from Brian Ortega to Calvin Cater, there was a 252 day layoff. Day layoff. Going from Jai Herbert to Ant, uh, Alex Hernandez, there was a 231 day layoff. Going from Brad Riddell to Drew Dober, there was a 448 day layoff. But this year, this will be his third fight. So one of the most active years he's had in a while. Always like seeing Money Moicano uh, keeping active in these fights. So that'll be to his advantage. Uh, but also, obviously, Benoit St. Denis fought this year too uh, against Dustin Poirier. He's had a few injuries. I uh, was supposed to fight Mirsad Bektik back in 2015. Had an injury there. Uh, what else? He had an injury against Mike De La Torre, And then he had an injury against Armin Saryuk. And remember that fight was supposed to happen last April. Didn't end up happening. Had an injury there too. Don't know what those injuries were. Uh, he's only had one close fight on the judges' scorecards. That was the Jeremy Stevens fight back in 2017. If you look at the media scorecards for that, that was UFC on Fox 24. 14 media members scored the fight for Moicano. Just three for Stevens. So no controversy there. Should have been unanimous. And let's look at uh, Moicano's stats. You can see strikes landed per minute, 4.38. His striking accuracy is at 48%. His striking defense is at 60%. Um, and his takedown average is at 1.89. His takedown accuracy is at 45%, and his takedown defense is at 72%. So very interesting uh, there. And obviously, if you look at Moicano, majority of his wins are by submission. He's got 10 of those, just uh, one knockout as well. And uh, he's got eight wins by decision too. So we'll see how this one goes. Now, who am I picking in this fight? It's an interesting one because Moicano has been on a bit of a roll lately, but you guys know how I feel about Benoit St. Denis, and it's going to be pretty hard for me to pick against him. I fully admit I picked him against Dustin Poirier, and I have no regrets about that because, hey, he was looking good early in that fight. He looked like he could be on Poirier's level, just ran out of steam. I don't think he's going to run out of steam in this fight, and that's why I'm going to pick Benoit St. Denis by second round knockout. Now, why am I picking him by second round knockout? Actually, i got to back this up a little bit. Sorry. I'm picking him by second round knockout. There's no odds on this fight yet, but I'm not alone in this prediction because look at this. On Tapology, 78% of people picking St. Denis, only 22% picking Moicano. I think that's a little too wide if I'm being honest, but I am in the same boat here. And, and what it comes down to, to me, is the style matchup. So Benoit St. Denis, while he does have a lot of submission wins, in fact, most of his wins are by submission, if you look at it there. 69% uh, of his wins are by submission. He's also got four wins by knockout. And if you've watched this guy fight, like we saw in the Frivola fight, and we've seen in the Thiago Moises fight, this guy hits like a truck. There's, if, if you guys have seen my video on how I bet and pick fights, this kind of lines up with that school of thought that I have, which is there's certain guys that you see do things and they're special. And Benoit St. Denis is one of those fighters. He doesn't just go out there and perform. He goes out there and does something a bit different. He's fast. He's durable. He's a guy that can, you know, again, dangerous on the ground, great on the feet. He can rock guys. Like that Tiago Moises fight, who, by the way, is a teammate of Moicano, that was a complete beatdown. And Tiago Moises is not a slouch. This is a formerly ranked UFC lightweight. For St. Denis to go out there and do that against him and so many other opponents is very impressive. I haven't got that same feeling with Hainato Moicano. And let's be honest here, Moicano a bit older. That kind of surprised me, actually, when I looked at his age, that he's 35. That one St. Denis is not even in the prime of his career yet, in my opinion. I mean, he's 28. I think usually when you get into that 30 range, that's when you're hitting your prime. So couple things. Uh, Benoit St. Denis has only gone the distance once in his career. I don't think that happens here. So any concerns about cardio, I don't even think it'll matter because I think he'll probably finish the fight before that. <coughs> With Moicano's ground game, and we saw all his submission wins. And how many times has Moicano been submitted? I think Ortega is maybe the only guy to do it. Yeah, the only guy to submit him was Ortega. Benoit St. Denis is not going to submit him. The only way I could see that maybe happening is if St. Denis, you know, cracks him and then gets him by submission. But I doubt that happens here, which is why I lean more knockout. The, th the key thing here is Moicano has been knocked out three times in his career. That's a bit concerning. Um, now, granted, some of those losses were at uh, featherweight where I think he was cutting too much weight. Like, look at these losses like Aldo in the second round. Zombie got finished in the first round, which was not a, w a loss that aged very well because Zombie did not win many fights after that. So kind of looking back at that, that was a bit concerning. And then you got Fiziv, who, yes, very good. Marco Power. Actually, Fiziv reminds me a bit of St. Denis, but he finishes him in the first round. So that's why it's like we've seen Moicano, unfortunately, get rocked. And against Jalen Turner, he got dropped in that fight, too. And if Turner had better fight IQ, he probably would have finished that fight in the first round. But... He ends up walking away and thinking that he has the win. And Moicano, we know what happened there. He comes back and gets the win. So there's that too. 
Um, and then the other thing as well is this fight's going to be in Paris. The crowd's going to be on his side. I think he's going to be fired up. I can't see St. Denis going out there and having a bad performance when he's going to be fighting in front of his home crowd uh, here in Paris as well. So, um, yeah, I just think that, again, I would probably pick a lot of lightweights against, or a lot, I would, I, I, there's a lot of lightweights I would pick to lose against Benoit St. Denis. I'm very high on him. I think the last fight, again, I think the staff played a big role in that. And I think you can take some positives away out of the fact that he looked like he was, you know, doing quite well against Poirier in that first round as well. So, again, I think that's a positive, too. But, yeah, I just think style-wise, like, I think this is a bad matchup. I think St. Denis hits like a truck. I think Moicano at some point is going to get tagged. I think it's going to be in the second round. I think St. Denis knocks him out. So it's as simple as that. So that's what I'm going with. Benoit St. Denis, second round knockout to get it done in this main event. So I want to know what you guys think in the comments section below. Again, Moicano has surprised us. He surprised me and Jalen Turner. I thought Turner was going to knock him out. He almost did, but didn't end up happening. And Moicano, again, has fought far better opposition overall if you look at his resume. So I definitely see those things too. But like I said, St. Denis is the exception of my rule. This guy is special. I think he will fight for a title one day. I do think he's a contender at some point. Um, I just think there's so much talent there with what he's doing. And I, I think that continues here in this fight. So let me know what your prediction is in the comments. Follow me on Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, at Lynch on Sports. My name is James Lynch. Thanks so much for watching. And I'll see you next time.